Hey everybody, it's Michael. I've got a new video for you today. This is a custom long arm quilting. We're doing the Uncharted Waters pattern from Judy Niemeyer of Quiltworks. This is a quilt that I put together. And as always, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and get notified. And you can find out more about me at michaelquilts.com. Follow me on social media, Michael Quilts on Facebook, michael.quilts on Instagram. Okay, so what we have here is the Uncharted Waters pattern. So I started this project back in May, and uh, it's actually one that I took up to Montana with me to work on at a uh, quilt works retreat. And I quilted it over the summer, did the filming of it, and uh, put it into a show. It's been around for a little while now, so it's been about four months since I quilted it, but I'm finally getting to posting this footage for you. Okay, so we're going to go through um, just the general process of what I did with the custom quilting on it. Okay, a rundown of what I'm using. Um, the quilting machine, this is an Anova 22 Classic, and I'm doing all hand-guided on this one, no digitized on this project. Uh, I'm using Glide 40 weight for the thread. I've got two layers of Hobbs 8020 black batting for this project. Uh, the fabric is Tim Holtz Regions Beyond, plus a little bit of uh, solid black and, a, and another line of Tim Holtz. There are kits available for this project actually on my website. It includes the pattern, the fabric bundle, and there might be a modification or two. At the time of this filming, I have a, a limited stock of it, so it may be gone by the time you're watching, but maybe not. Check out michaelquilts.com. It's under the kits section in the shop. Okay, for the rulers, uh, I'm using a straight 12, a straight 8. I use the Ditch Everything Mini. I use the Daisy Ditch and Echo. It will show as the Perfect Petal or the Dragonfly Lotus. It had different names prior to the actual release. Um, you don't have to use that ruler at all. You just need to curve. But uh, I use that, and uh, I use the Slotted 9 and show you how I'm using that um, on one of the skinny inner borders. Okay, so I think that's about it for supplies. Uh, let's get right into the quilting. Okay, so I pretty much start every project with ditching or outlining, if you will, big shapes. And on this one, I think I, I ditched around the main border of the quilt first. And then I decided that I was gonna come inside and do this star, this big star that takes shape with the chalkboard charcoaly gray fabric so I'm using a, a medium gray thread for this and I decide that I'm going to do most everything that's going to be done in this thread color I'm going to go ahead and accomplish at this point so lots of um, outlining of shapes and then I'll go through and fill some of these that I'm doing right now right one thing about the way that I film is I'm most often I'm listening to something that's on television that's behind me. I'm not actually watching it, and I forget. So a lot of when I, times when I'm filming, you're hearing the machine, but you're also hearing some episode of whatever <laughs> I'm watching, and it's really distracting. But there's something I like about hearing the machine, so I do need to make myself uh, put in headphones or just you know quilt in silence or something because I want you to be able to hear what's happening with my machine as well. But in this video, you're going to get a little bit of everything, a little voiceover and sometimes a little bit of music, sometimes just the sound of the machine. All right, so I'm gonna continue outlining um, and then we'll stop and we'll do something else in just a minute. When I'm doing ditch work with these real big pieces, I'm almost always using the straight 12. It's, it's the most handy for me and I'm most comfortable with it. And my ditching, I try to be a th thread or two on whichever side that I'm picking. I don't ditch right down in the seam line. Um, I'm always trying to decide which side I want. So, and it doesn't matter how it's pressed, I'm gonna ditch where I want to ditch. <laughs> Um, unless it's just really too bulky to do. But so on this one, I'm trying to stay within the gray, obviously. And I go through here and I'm doing this particular triangle in the center of the star. And I decide that I'm going to do some free motion with it as well. So I'm gonna put a feather in here. I'm using the long straight side of the triangle 
as the stem or the, the, the vein, if you will. And so it's, it's sort of like a half feather. And I'm doing the traditional bump back feathers that I always do. You can watch me do this and explain it a little in some of my other videos. In fact, I should just do a separate video on it. But basically, I'm going up uh, around backtracking, coming back down into the spine. I do what I call split the difference with, well, I'll have to show you that in another video. But anyway, I'm doing little feathers in these uh, skinny gray triangles. Okay, so you've noticed I've moved into the spikes uh, with the smaller little triangles here. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the feathers like I did before. And uh, I'm using the Ditch Everything Mini because that fits nicely for these this size. I could use the straight eight too. Anyway, I'm pointing here because I'm telling you which side I'm doing the feathering on. So I'm getting ready to go here and make my first little plume. So I'm using the orange as if it's the vein. I'm going out, backtracking, coming back down into the spine or the vein. I split the difference here, which is I see a V and I go in the middle of it and I swing out, backtrack, I come back down into the spine. There's a V there. I go through it, go around, backtrack, swing out, come back down into the spine. I promise I'll do another video on that that's dedicated to that. Um, and I know it's hard because of the thread color I'm using and the lighting that you can't see all the thread, and I apologize for that, but hopefully you can see the motion of the hopping foot, and, and sometimes you can see the thread. So I think there's still some value to it, even though it's not crystal clear with a good contrast where you can see all the stitches. <laughs> Okay, I'm working on the large black ring that has all the flying geese in it. And I'm using the Daisy Ditch and Echo uh, ruler. Uh, you're, on this particular one, it's gonna say Dragon, Fly, Lotus, because I named it all different sorts of things before I had it produced, I've told you that before. But this is me using it. You don't need it, you need a curve for this. Um, this one happens to be really pretty close, so I used it, and I was, you know, had been testing this out prior, so if you don't have this, um, you could use, I think the 20 is is pretty good for this one, and uh, I may have used that. I may have used the 20 or the 30 before on this, this shape. Anyway, so I ditched right along the edge, and then you'll see I just put a quarter inch um, echo on that and I'm going to do that on both sides so what you're, you're not going to see is me ditching the geese and then putting the background fill I didn't film that part but 
after I do this ditch on the outside and put the quarter inch echo on the inside, I do go and outline every one of those geese and do pebbling all through it. You'll see it in the final product. Um, and I do that kind of all at once. Like I don't outline every geese and then go back, back and do the pebbling. I do the outline and the pebbling all at the same time to make it a little bit more efficient. Okay, you'll notice that I switch sides with the ruler, and when I do that, I'm just looking at the hopping foot and seeing that the edge of the hopping foot is close just to the edge of the shape. That's just another way to put the channel in there.
Okay, I've, I've moved on to the gingham triangles, and what I'm doing here is doing straight lines, and I'm not using my ruler to measure. I'm using the fabric, so I've picked, I'm not doing both. I'm not doing like a crosshatch. Instead, I've chosen to go one direction with it, and so there's the bottom of it, and then I'm gonna go up. I'm going to stitch in the ditch until I get to the next line that's going in that same direction. Come back. Stitch in the ditch over. Go up. So you see the, the process I'm doing, but I'm not going back to cross that. So I'm just doing those lines. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about ten lines and it's just giving it um, a really nice texture but not overdoing it okay that's what i'm doing in all of these gingham triangles Okay, so I have something for you. I'm doing the uh, quarter inch away on both sides of the um, seam line of the black. So in a sense, I'm putting a channel in quarter inch away on either side, and then I'm gonna put um, circles in that channel. Well, that's what I think I'm gonna do. So here's where things get interesting. You can go behind if you want and put your ruler up on that seam and stitch across like normal, but remember, I mean, this is awkward to put your hand back here. You could, if you wanted to, get your needle where it's supposed to be, find a spot from this side here, I can also see this other seam line and I can match up a line here, which is super easy to do. And that's probably what I would do, but sometimes you don't always have this other line next to you, closest to your body. That's where this ruler comes in handy. Okay, this is the slotted nine. And I'm just, I've made this a, at least a year ago. I'm just starting to put it on the website. So I do have a stock of them. All right, so what you do with this, this can also be used for binding but 
this can go behind your hopping foot here. You can use this here to butt up to the back of your foot and then so you're in a sense keeping this part of the ruler I'm um, sorry for the glare here let me get that light out of the way well we need some of it let's try this one okay so I totally lost audio when I turned off the light I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm saying while I'm I, I, it looks like I was pointing at lines okay that I say you can line up that bottom dash line if you want. You're going to put your ruler, uh, the top part at the top scene where I'm pointing right there. Okay, and there's a construction crew here, so apologies for the noise. <laughs> Pathetic. All right, I'm saying that you can hold on to it down there at the bottom or the bottom and the top and sew along and just move your ruler along. But um, what it's doing is it's, it's letting you use the back part of the ruler but hold it from the front so that you're not having to do that thing right there that I'm showing you which is if you're you know looking at it straight on you're bending your arm and your hand and your wrist and you're not going to be able to do that for very long so anyway um, then I'm saying you know you don't have to you can just use your straight 12 or whatever straight ruler you have and kind of um, guesstimate and keeping the back of the hopping foot at the seam back there um, or use, I'm pointing to that dash line that you can use a, a line there too. But anyway, I like to use this when I remember to because it's so much easier when you're um, you're needing that support from the back, but you're quilting from the front. Okay, I guess I lost auto video too. Let's go on to another part. Okay, now I've moved on to these star point uh, triangles that jet out underneath that ring of geese. Uh, it's the it's the polka dot fabric that has the numbered fabric inside of it. So I'm ditching it, just trying to stay about a thread inside of the polka dot fabric. And once I do that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to encircle the polka dots. So I'm going to create a circle around the polka dots and kind of move my way through that triangle making those circles but not doing a whole lot more um, the effect is that it sort of gives that polka dot a little bit of extra dimension on the outside it makes it a little bit larger too with the way I'm circling it so see I'm circling it and if the polka dot happens to be on the edge then I will pretend like the circle goes um, had gone all the way and got cut off if that makes sense Okay, so you can see I'm just kind of working my way around. And I might be backtracking several times. I might not backtrack on every one of them. It's however I need to do it to get to the next polka dot, basically. Moving on, I'm showing you that I'm using the purple air and water soluble pen. I use it mostly for the air. I don't usually put water on it. It, it pretty much goes away within 24 hours. 
Um, so I have created a curvy spine because I'm putting feathers, big feathers, in this background. I'm not doing little tiny feathers. They're, they're pretty large. And I think that's good for the space. Okay, so um, after I do my vein, I start at the top and I put a teardrop and then I'm following my vein that I drew. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm doing the, the feather that I was showing you earlier in the gray. Um, so usually I do one side and then the other. So I'm on the left side. I'm doing it like I always do with the split the difference to go out. And then I backtrack and come back down into the spine. Split the difference, swing out, backtrack, come back down into the spine. So you can see me doing that here. And I'm basically filling the space with large, large feathers. Okay, so I finished this quilt up doing a piano key border, and these are pretty large piano keys. You wouldn't be able to play a song with these. <laughs> they're, they're about an inch and, and a quarter finished. Okay, so I'm marking them with a chalk. <clears throat> I could just use my ruler, but I like to mark it. And this is one time where I'm actually doing them double. I'm, I'm doing a double line instead of traveling at the interior border there. I'm coming back. I don't usually do it that way. I usually kind of do up, over, down, over, up. But for this one, I decided to try it, and I like it, and it's 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 easy. I always try to make sure that I have that raw edge uh, stitched down really well. It, it, it helps a lot. I do that with all of my quilts, actually, whenever I'm quilting. Really try to make it easier for the person who's putting the binding on. In this case, it's me because <laughs> it's my quilt. And so I like that to be, you know, nice and flat and secure. But if ever I do a, a customer quilt, I always make sure that that very um, final edge has a good stitch line on it. <clears throat> okay, so this is real simple. Uh, I'm just, I'm not going to show you the whole thing, obviously. After we move past this triangle here, uh, we'll be wrapping things up, but I want you to see how I handle it. It's really easy on this one because I happen to space it perfectly where I'm just going over and meeting the point there and continuing on. But um, I'm following my chalk lines and, you know, these don't have to be exactly perfect. This um, is such an easy way to finish a quilt. And I especially like it if I have a lot of waviness and I can entrap um, some excess fabric within those piano keys. This this quilt wasn't bad, um, maybe because I was taking my time with it, but that's how I'm finishing this one. Well, several months have passed since that filming, but here is where Uncharted Waters currently resides, on the back wall behind my long arm. And remember, uh, there might still be some kits if you'd like to sew one of these great quilt works patterns. It's a lot of fun. Check out my website for that. So until next time, happy quilting, and I will see you soon.